Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and welcome to another episode of Darkroom Nights 2022. This is part four. If you're not aware, Darkroom Nights is a mini series where I create a box set of my favorite black and white photos of 2021. If this video interests you, be sure and check out the others. I've created a playlist, link in the description, and I also have a daily contest. The only way to enter the contest is to join the Discord, also link in the description. For those of you who choose to pre-order my box set, you will get 50% off plus free worldwide shipping. In the last episode, I did a double bill because two of my favorite photos of the year happened to be on the same roll. That actually didn't happen once, it happened twice. You're gonna see another part of this series containing two photos from the same roll. Um, not this episode though. I'm gonna slow things down a bit with a photo from one of the greatest road trips I've ever taken. Let's get started. So last year I had set out to go on the most intense photo road trip I had ever taken. There is a stretch of land in Alberta here called the Cowboy Trail. Now depending on the source, it goes from Mayor Thorpe to Lundbreck Falls, but uh, some people seem to think it takes a dog leg over to Cardston, but it is at least 584 kilometers long. It took me days to traverse. I mean, I stopped in every small town. I hit as many landmarks as I could. I stayed in great hotels. I stayed in also great hotels. I was going to say less than great hotels, but they were all kind of nice. And I spent eight to 10 hours on the road per day, just motoring, just hammering it, stopping in all the towns, taking great photos with my Nikon F100 and my Pentax 67. I also shot a bunch of digitals. Now, the one thing that I didn't do was record any of it. I wanted this to be like meditation. I wanted to be in complete solitude. So I didn't take any video and I only recorded my thoughts by writing them down in a journal, actually. I regret nothing. It was an amazing experience. It was so peaceful. There were very few stressful situations and I would do it again. I'm actually going to do it again. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do it again. I think what I wanna do is do it three years in a row and then make a book out of it. I was gonna make a book out of just the first trip, but honestly, I don't think I captured enough. There's just so much. But I'll tell you though, if I do set out again this year, I will vlog about it. Here are some highlights from that trip. I hope you enjoyed those. Now this photo here is probably my favorite photo from the trip. Uh, not necessarily my favorite in the way that I think it's the best photo, but I think it's the best photo for this situation. It is an image that looks good, blown up or small. And I've also already printed this on 11 by 14 and it's hanging in my hallway. Here is the negative I'm working with today. As you can see, it is a really 
good, well-rounded negative. It's not too dense in the sky, and there is some really dark details down here. And like I said, I've printed this already, and what I found was a good old split tone did the job. First I went over it with a zero filter, and then a contrast five filter. I was able to maintain detail in the sky and bring out those clouds without uh, overexposing the mountain area. It's an overall fantastic image and one of my best blowups. Because of all this, today should go pretty smooth. Today's image was captured on my main medium format camera, the Pentax 6.7. Uh, the other thing that I almost forgot to mention is that the mountain is called Mount Dungarvan and was captured from Highway 6 last September. The film used was good old trusty Triax shot at box speed. The paper I'm going to be using today is not pictured here because I don't have the box for it. It's in one of my paper safes. Um, however, I am almost 100% sure it is Ilford Multigrade 4 Pearl. And to round things off, I'm going to be using Ilford Multigrade Developer. Now, uh, this thing is more than a couple years old. I'm going to say on the low end it's two years, on the high end it could be four. We'll find out if it still works. Every time I've said that so far, I haven't been disappointed. You might have seen a couple episodes ago, I used Photographer's Formulary Liquidol. That bottle was at least a year old. It worked out just fine. I've got faith. I've got a lot of faith. Okay, folks, I got a bunch of stuff that I got to tell you before I get into the first test trip here. Uh, first off, I tried the multigrade, and all I did was pour it out and realized that I didn't want this developer anywhere near my paper. So while it might have produced an image, there was a bunch of floaties. It looked horrible. If you haven't used multigrade before, it doesn't look like this. It doesn't look like root beer. It looks like club soda. It is practically clear. I didn't want any unforeseen circumstances to arise that I would only realize when it was too late and I was done printing. So I dumped it and I decided to try the Arista Warm Tone Developer. And I, I used this stuff last year, so it's only a year old. Uh, and I remembered that the main issue was the developing time, but it only really dawned on me while I was developing it and it was in the soup for two and a half minutes and nothing happened and even when I hit the lights to bombard it with light while it was in the developer uh, still nothing happened so definitely know that that stuff was also junk oh and the other thing that I forgot to mention is that it calls for a one plus nine ratio and I did one plus four and I still didn't get an image so Two liquid developers completely destroyed, and well, I guess I probably dodged a bullet by not trying to bother wasting my time with either of them, and I just went back to Aristodol. So here's the first test strip with a contrast level zero and two second intervals. So two, four, six, etc. I wanted to get a better idea of what the proper exposure was, so I developed a second test strip, and that is this one here at half second intervals. All right, I just had to fix that exposure because it did not look on camera the way it's supposed to look. But yeah, half a second, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, etc. And I thought half, one, one and a half, two was pretty decent. So between one and a half and two. And then I developed this third test strip and I just realized actually a couple of things. First off, there's a dust speck on there. I'm going to have to take care of that. There's another one there. I'm going to have to make sure I take care of that. But I actually buggered this up. I did three seconds by accident. I just realized this as I was looking at the last test strip. So it's a good thing I stopped. Sometimes just talking to the camera helps me work things out. But going back to the second test strip here for contrast level zero, I'm thinking zero, one, one and a half, two. I'm thinking one and a half. So I do one and a half, and then I'll do half second intervals on the contrast level five. But first I'll try and get the dust off of it. Here's my next test strip, and I did forget to get rid of these specks of dust, but that's okay because it's just a test. And in this case I did one and a half seconds on contrast zero, 
and then a half second intervals at contrast five. And then I made this print doing one and a half seconds each. I did blow out the dust, but this little guy here seems to be persistent. I'm gonna have another look at the negative after this and see if I can blast that guy out of my negative. I'm having a bit of a creative conundrum. I don't even know if that's the right phrase, but basically I do love the way this looks, but I'm not sure if this is the exposure that I want. Maybe yes, maybe no, I'm, I'm sort of 50-50. I'm looking at it, and again, I love the way it looks. The foreground is really well exposed. The only thing, and this is the same as on my 11 by 14, is that the shadow up here looks a little hazy. Now, this is pretty realistic because, you know, when you look at things that are far off, you get that hazy look, so it does stay true to that, but in some ways it also looks a little underexposed. Now if I go back to my test strip here, and if I increase that, I will end up making this area too dark. If I take it to two and a half seconds, which is half one, one and a half, two, two and a half, it definitely ends up being too dark. If I take it to two seconds, it still looks pretty dark in the foreground. Now I do have experience dodging and burning, but I don't know if I'm prepared to dodge and burn 15 five by sevens. It's a tough call. Okay, I think I know what I'm gonna do. Going back to my zero contrast filter exposure test, I went with a zero, one, one and a half. I went with a one and a half here, and then I ended up going with a one and a half on the five, and I ended up with this. As you can see, a one and a half second on the five continues to darken the skies. So what I think I need to do is take my zero contrast filter down to one second and then do a five contrast exposure like I did here and see if I can darken it up up here without over darkening the skies. That's what I'm gonna do. It's a bit of a backpedal, but for the sake of getting the image just the way I want to, I think that's what I need to do. I've done a few more test trips now, and I gotta say I'm starting to, to lose my mind here because I'm trying to figure out a perfect exposure when there might not be one, you know, without dodging and burning, which would mean that I would have to start over because I would have to stop down on my lens to give me enough time to do the dodging and burning. But let me just take you through what I've done in the last few tests. This one here is one second with half second intervals at contrast level five. And two and a half gives a pretty good exposure, but I wasn't quite happy with it. So what I wanted to do next was just look at how the contrast level five um, affected the image. And again, half second intervals, half one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. So then I thought, well, let me do a three second exposure at contrast level five, and then a half a second exposure at contrast level zero. And here it is, three seconds at a contrast level five, and half a second at a contrast level zero. And it's, it's too dark. I'm gonna hit the lights again, do three seconds at a contrast level five and see how that looks. If it's a nice balance of foreground and background, I'm gonna go ahead with this. This is easily the most test trips I've done uh, since I started this marathon. I think there's two more in the garbage. Uh, yeah, way too much overthinking this. Like this looks, this looks okay. This is my original, uh, you know, final print. I just, I feel like the mountain could be punchier, and since that's the main subject, I should try and focus on that. But yeah, heading back to the enlarger now, hitting the lights. All right, folks, if there's one thing that I did this episode is overthink the strip test process. After you saw the last footage there, I ended up doing several more strip tests 
And I was like, I'm not even going to subject you to my line of thinking. I'm just going to get to the end of it and tell you what happened. And after testing it in split tone and just a five and this and that and the other thing, the, the exposure that won was a single exposure at contrast level three. That's all it was. Medium contrast, two seconds, and here's the shot. It is a very well-balanced image. I think I was asking too much to go in the extremes of a zero and a five and the combination of the two. Sometimes the simplest answer is the best answer, and in this case, I got a really great shot. There's a nice detail in the sky, there's nice detail in the mountains, and the foreground is also well represented. I want to give a quick shout out to Dennis for his generous donation to the cause here. Uh, if you're interested in supporting this mini-series and letting me know that I should do it again next year, follow the PayPal link in the description. Today's contest is going to be a little bit different from the previous ones. Head on over to the Discord channel, link in the description, go to the Darkroom Nights 2022 section, and post your favorite photo of 2021. I'll pick a winner, and you'll get a free print. Well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I don't know if I did. <laughs> it was a bit of a, a roller coaster, of course. As soon as I say that everything's going to be A-OK -okay with that multi-grade developer, everything went right downhill from there. Hopefully, it'll be better tomorrow. Um, if you like what I do around here, you can support me on Patreon. Through my Patreon, you'll get things like early access, free prints, and your name in the credits. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic. Stay classic.